Welcome to the Chess Channel, the channel where you can learn loads. Today, we are going to cover one game of many that was played in the ongoing chess Olympiad that is taking place in India. With the hundreds of game being played daily, it is simply impossible to keep up with everything that is happening. What we are going to see today is a checkmate of the first degree. Round 2 is still in progress and so far we had seen a number of checkmates in both male and female sections. The game of the day has to be the encounter of round 2 between Machteld Fan Forest who is up again Morgan Mills. In case we do not know who is who, Machteld is the younger sister of Lucas and Jordan, and Mills, Morgan Mills is from Canada. With Machteld who we shall be calling Maggie, having a way higher ELO than that of Morgan's, you can expect at some degree of certainly who is going to be victorious. Though nothing is written in stone, given we had seen our fair share of surprises across the board, you can never accurately predict the end result of any single game. Today Maggie has the white pieces and Morgan will do her absolute best not to disappoint. The young ladies have never met before. This also means if you have not done any preparation, you may not know what type of opening to expect and in general what direction the game can take. With this in mind, let's look at what happened in this game of round 2. Maggie White set off with 1. E4, Morgan answers with the caro, and with Maggie shooting off with this knight move, Morgan goes for the center. Many moves exist here and what you are looking is pretty much opening theory. You can go for the advanced variation by getting the pawn to move in E5, you can take the pawn on D5 and you can develop the queenside knight. Maggie did just this, and in turn Mills develops her kingside knight too to mount the pressure in on this central pawn on E4. Maggie without delay launched after the knight. The knight makes a jump into the fourth. And though Maggie can push the pawn right into d4 to occupy the center, she avoids this move and chooses to avoid the swap of knights by getting her own knight to find the second. After Morgan developed her queen to this outpost, things were beginning to get tricky. There is mate in one lurking in the background and it would not be the first time players would miss it. In the game of round 2 between Riak and Estor, Estor stunned Riak with a specular checkmate, Nakario did the same against Nibol, Olet of Guam did the same to Priscilla Adit and the story of the checkmates goes on and on. In the Olympiad, many players have the tendency to take things all the way and this is why we get to see the increased number of checkmates. Let's focus our attention to what happened in this game of round 2. Yes, you may have guessed it right. Maggie pushed along with this pawn to d4, e6 was played here, and because Maggie did not like the looks of this knight occupying this central outpost on e4, this is how Maggie plays it. In short, her motives are crystal clear. She does not mind handing over the knight for the knight and landing herself with a double pawn. If she does, this would also mean that if this file on the h file opens up, this may play in favor of Maggie. A player of an ELO likes Morgan should easily be able to work this detail out. In light of what we just said, this was how Morgan plays it. When Maggie forced this move on Morgan, some action had to be taken. Since the knight cannot back off without being captured, her decision was a no-brainer. She went on to take the knight and with Maggie capturing in this way, Morgan does not get rid of this pawn on d4 but instead develops her queenside knight and at the same time mounts the pressure on the very center of the board. The center is often very important but we have also seen, having the center is not a prerequisite of winning. The question to deal with right now is how to handle this pressure on d4. There is a trap in the making but is it worth mentioning it? If either player falls of it, then it would be worth saying a word about it. Maggie here completely ignores this pawn on d4 and chooses to get her king to safety. With Morgan taking no prisoners, she went on to eliminate this pawn, Maggie in turn repositions her queen to this outpost, and with now Morgan putting the brakes on this very important square on g5, Maggie still is going to find a way to penetrate right through Morgan's shields. The first step she took was to come up with this rather provocative response to try and elicit a reaction. Players hovering round the 2000 ELO mark can be fooled but there are many factors that can come into play. If you are intimidated, things can go wrong, if you are nervous things can also go wrong, 
and if you are stressed by any psychological factors, things are easily bound to go south. With the prospect of getting into G6 with a type of sacrifice, Morgan was going to take zero chances. She opted for a U-turn with her queen to try and keep Maggie at bay. With the queen on the seventh, white cannot easily find a way to penetrate. If this knight move into h4 was provocative, Maggie's next response was right on the money. She lifted her queen into this outpost on the fifth, and is now looking to create havoc. Some flags are waved here but do we have any red flags waved? There is some pressure on f7 but with the queen covering this outpost, can Maggie find a way to break through? There is one basic theory that many can keep in mind. If you are not threatened with a checkmate, do not allocate unnecessary resources to deal with a problem that does not exist. Taking this on board, Morgan had a different philosophy. What she did, was to challenge the queen by launching this pawn against her but this is one move that took her over 22 minutes to think about. Having gone for it was probably something that may have surprised Maggie. With plenty of time to kill, Maggie was trying to work how best to make progress. Her next response took just about 6 minutes and 41 seconds. Can you guess her next move? Let's improvise before we show. If you pick up this pawn using the knight, if the knight is removed, this incoming check using the queen by taking on g6 is most likely to do the job quite nicely. If king d7 what is going to happen next? This is what you need. Once this bishop comes off, even if the rook falls, this incoming check sorts things out quite simply. All we need is to demonstrate how. If you place the knight into e7 to block the check, you can always crab hold of the rook but what if you try this intermediate move first? This first class check is going to earn the queen and the game is over in just a handful of moves. So now that we demonstrated knight e7 cannot be a strong response, rook e7 is not much better either. Once you take with a check, king d8 can be followed by this check, and with the king forced to the seventh, however you choose to play it, this game is practically over. h6 can be removed, or you can still go on to increase the number of checks. If we return to the original position, Maggie does go on to remove this pawn from g6 but this is how she went about it. With the pressure now on f7, Morgan could still use the knight to stop minimize the attack, but rather than getting the knight to return to the 8th, she still uses the knight but this time she goes on to pick up this pawn from the 5th. Because we cannot take back what we said, let's ignore we said this. Morgan does remove this pawn but she didn't use the knight but the queen. What she hoped was for the queens to come off but this is not what happened. Maggie removed this pawn with an incoming check, the king made his way into d8, and how Maggie handles the situation, was to back off the queen to this outpost on the third. With the knight looking at a nasty fork on g6, Morgan is forced to back off the queen to block the knight's access and from this position on, things were getting slightly complex. Why? Because the knight's access to g6 in fact could not be stopped. Maggie used the combo of the queen and bishop to jump the knight into g6, Morgan gets the rook to find the seventh, but was this going to be enough? When Maggie got rid of this pawn, this poor knight was dropped but the compensation was regained by not just taking this bishop off but the incoming check was the significant factor. King c7 led to this follow-up bishop check and this king was now going to be flashed into oblivion. With Morgan now forced to find the 6th, this bishop came flying off. What happened from this point on is short of a tragedy. What is the best move to go for? It doesn't even really matter. Probably rook f7 was the best option but even here Morgan was trying to find a way to cover or a better way to use his recover. In a relatively short period of time, Morgan tried this approach to the game but this move instantly backfired. Can you see how Maggie handles the situation, and if so what did she do? She sneaked in with this check. With the king now forced out and about, can you help Maggie to find a way forward? 
Maggie herself opted for this bishop response and was hoping to squeeze in a checkmate with queen a5. However, this is not straightforward unless Morgan is going to miss things. For starters there is this attack on the queen, but after she escapes to this outpost, Maggie would still be miles ahead. Rook e7 for example, runs into this push, and however you choose to play it, this is more or less a done deal. Should you go for this queen response, this incoming check is all you would ever need. If you take, and you have two, queen f3 would be the icing on the cake. Even if this bishop drops, if you apply this check, it is safe to say it would be game over. If king a6, this is one way to checkmate, and this happens right after knight a5 and queen takes. If you alternatively try this knight response to block the check, once the knight comes flying off with an incoming check, king c5 can lead to this sneaky response. King c6 can also lead to the demise of this pawn, and the checkmate is now for sure lurking in the background. If you use any decent engine, I'm sure it will be able to discover a checkmate in no more than 12 to 14 moves. If we return to the game, Morgan was very capable of working out this eventuality and for this very reason she summoned the queen to come in and block everything. But things were about to end very soon. What did Mac tell her and how did she force a speedy ending to her game? This is what she did just to be able to get the queen to move out to enforce the checkmate. When Morgan covered once again, Maggie shows he true class. Can you speculate what follows next? Maggie went on to get rid of the knight. The rook here vanished and this is how Maggie slips in a checkmate and manages to end her game in just a matter of 26 moves. This young Dutch female is well known in her home country and has beaten far stronger rivals. And this is Maggie's first game in the 44th Olympiad that is taking place in Chennai, India. We hope to bring you up to speed with more games as they take place but as we said Elia, there is so much one can cover. God bless and we hope to see you with our next edition.